He's so holy. He's oh so holy. He's so worthy. He's oh so worthy. What a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. Heavenly Father, we come before you now. We thank you, Lord, for the soul that lies here today. And Father, we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Father, we know that Sister Broaden loved the Lord with all her heart, mind, and soul. And we're here to celebrate this morning for you have called her on home. And we thank you so much for being in her life. We thank you so much for leading her and guiding her and teaching her all the ways of the Lord so that she would have you, Lord. And we thank you, God, for the family that's here. We thank you for the friends that have come to celebrate this home going, this celebration of life. And we ask, oh God, that you comfort ye all those that are here right now. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Michelle Jackson, if she would, uh, to come and give us the Old Testament and the New Testament readings. And we'll ask her to come again and pray for the family as well. For our Old Testament passage, I'm going to be reading Job 14, 1 and 2, and Psalms 103, 15 through 18. Man that is born or woman that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But she comes forth like a flower and withers. She flees like a shadow and continues not. And as for woman, her days are like grass. She flourishes like a flower of the field for the wind passes over and it is gone and its place no more knows it no more but the steadfast love of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him and his righteousness to the children's children and to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments for the new testament i'll be reading john 11 25 through 27 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. She who believes in me, though she die, shall yet shall she live. And whoever lives and believes in me never dies. Do you believe this, she said to him? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. He who is coming into this world. But we would not have you ignorant, children, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as those who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. 
For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, and the archangels call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall so we always shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. May we pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your presence in here today. We thank you for your manifested glory in here today. God, we walked in here under your strength, under your power. And God, as a part of this family, I pray for us today that you will continue to give us strength. I lift up my cousin to you. I thank you, oh God, that you are his comforter today, today and forevermore. I lift up his sons, his wife, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. Lord, I thank you that we had the privilege to walk life with my Aunt Eunice. And we thank you and we give you praise. Now, God, I thank you that your comfort and your peace just doesn't manifest itself today. But, God, it'll walk with us in the days and the months to come when we have a memory and we want to cry, we want to break down. I thank you that you'll be with us and that you'll walk alongside of us. I thank you that you will put your healing hand on those areas of our hearts that are hurting right now, oh God, and that you would be the medicine, the balm that we need to heal us from this grief. We thank you now, God, that as a family, you have been faithful to us. And we don't take that for granted. Forgive us if we have. But we don't take that for granted that you have been good to us as a family, God. And we bless your name for it. Now, God, we thank you that we would rally around Tony and Jason and Justin, oh God. And that we would encourage, that we would be there to encourage them and lift them up when they have their down moments. Missing my Aunt Eunice, oh God. I pray that you would give us strength. Let us have a ready word on our, our, our mouths and in our hearts, O oh God, that will bring about encouragement and healing and edification. God, now we thank you and we give you praise. We love you so much because even in death, you are still faithful and you are still good. And we recognize that today. We love you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Is CC here? Raise your hand. Where you at? Come on, CC. <laughs> Amen. Beautiful, beautiful songstress. We thank God for you. Come on and bless us today. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah, the smile to keep on crying. All right, here we go. They said this is one of her favorite songs, so I, I hope I do it justice. I hope I do it justice. All right. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God, born of His Spirit. I've been washed in His blood. Yeah. 
This is my story. Sing with me. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Say, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. I see angels descending, they bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. See, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. I'm praising my Savior. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior. I'm praising my Savior. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. God bless you, CC. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful, wonderful selection. We're going to ask uh, that your, your reflections be held to two minutes, please, uh, as we are on a time constraint. And so whatever you have to say, please make sure you keep it to two minutes. So if anyone has any uh, thing they want to say, you can come on at this time. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Amen. so much. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, we will have um, a musical selection from Sister Rebecca Overstreet. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you so much, Sister Overstreet. Hello, everybody. Eunice, Eunice was one of my phone talking put buddies. We used to talk about the Lord all the time. And that was, she kept me going, and we kept each other going. We talked about how good God is. And I think this song is what she's gonna be going, what she's gonna be telling us. That's what she's going to do right now. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. When it's all over, oh, when it's all over, then I shall see his face I shall see his face when it's all over oh yeah 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 when it's all I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Oh, Lord, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over, over and over and over. I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon as I Thank you, Sister Overstreet. Amen. We are so grateful to be blessed today. Hey, come on, come on. Is uh, Deacon Rogers still here? De is Deacon Rogers still here? Okay, would you ask me to come in, please? While I'm up here, I want to thank everybody for uh, definitely showing up and coming out and being a part of it. And um, anyway, I'll, I'll uh, table that for right now. But uh, thank you so much for everything. So that was just a me message from the family. I just wanted to sing something, but that's fine. So go ahead. We'll go ahead and proceed.
we'll wait until CC comes back. She may come back with him if that's your wish. No, she's back. She's back. Oh, she's back? Okay. All right. I'm sorry. All right. We have come to this occasion and the family, the Broughton family, has been a very, very, very close-knit family. I married into the Broughton family. And and that's the family saying, God bless me. <laughs> but one one thing I can say is when you come into the Broughton family, you come into the whole family. You, you don't uh, you don't just marry one. You 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 marry them all. And, uh, and so, but I'm grateful uh, to have known Eunice myself. Uh, Eunice and I and her sister, and we have a long history. I've been married for 50 years to Sister Broughton's sister. Thank you, thank you, yes. thank you. Yeah. Amen. And so that means I've known Eunice for over 50 years. And we, we've come to this occasion because we want to celebrate the life of Eunice Broughton. And I thought I would throw that in to uh, let the people know that I do have over 50 years of history with Sister Eunice Broughton. So when I speak, I know of what I am speaking. <laughs> no one has to tell me. I had the privilege of uh, helping to raise her son. And I'm very proud of the man that he turned out to be. She did a marvelous job of raising Tony Broughton. And in the process, she has two beautiful grandchildren out of the marriage to Bridget Broughton. And they are becoming young men as we speak. <laughs> but I do want you to go with me to the book of Job. You don't have to turn your Bibles. You don't have to pull your smartphones out. I'm going to bring you a few words from the ninth chapter of Job and a few words from 1 Timothy, the second chapter, the fifth and the sixth verse. And I won't hold you long, but I do want the family to know that we are going to miss Eunice. Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, that you allow us to celebrate this homegoing together as a family. Yeah. One of the, the wishes of Sister Broughton was that we be able to come together again, and here we are. She found a way. My God. We love you, Lord. Your ways are not our ways. Teach us your ways, Lord. So we pray this prayer. Protect this family. Keep this family together. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Job, it reads for, in the ninth chapter, 
beginning at the 32nd verse. It reads, for he is not a man as I am. That I should answer him. He is not a man that I am that I should that I, Ernest Benson, should answer him. I'm talking about God. You see, and and the Bible says this is what the Bible says, and we should come together in judgment. It says, neither is there any days, man, between us that might lay his hand upon us both. He's talking about an intermediary between him and God. You know the story of Job. You already know the afflictions that Job suffered. You already know everything about Job. Everybody that goes to church has read about Job. And here, here Job is, he, he is... He has lost everything. First Timothy says in uh, uh, First Timothy, the second chapter, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. And it goes on to say, Who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. He gave, he's talking about Jesus, and he says Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all of us, everyone in this sanctuary today. Jesus Christ has given himself as a ransom for you. Not just for you, for everybody. Not just for me, for everybody. And he says, a ransom for all to be testified in due time. I, I submit to you right now, you're going to need that um, days man. Days man is simply another interpretation for mediator. You're going to need that days man one day. Because guess what? You're going to go the same route that Eunice Broughton just traveled. And the Bible tells us that Job in his affliction, it, this is what the scripture says, uh, Job is in an argument right now. He's in an argument. Job's children are gone. Job is in an argument with his friends. His friends have come to comfort him just as we have come to comfort you, Tony. And just as we have come to comfort you, Jason. Understand me good. Just as we have come to comfort you, Justin. Just as we have come to comfort you, Vet, Gail. Understand me? Good. Nisi, Yvette, Carly, all of you. Hear me? Good. Just as we have come to comfort you, Job is right now in an argument with one of his friends. He's in his first battle after his affliction, after they have taken all of his children. Understand me good. God and Satan had a conversation, and Satan uh, went before God, and he got God's attention because Job was an upright man. He eschewed evil. He didn't do anything wrong, folks. But his children parted all night long. The Bible tells you in the Bible that, that his children were drinking all night long when the storms and the winds came. They had hangovers at the time. Understand me good. Job prayed for them daily. He prayed all the time for his children. It didn't stop God from taking them. Understand me good. And you said God didn't take them. No, he allowed Satan to. But I come to you today in the midst of all of that, all of that suffering that Job suffered. All of his children are dead. All of his cows are gone. All of his horses are gone. All of his houses are gone. They're all destroyed. All his sheep are gone. All his cattle are gone. All his camels are gone. 
His wife is fed up with him. How do I know that? The Bible tells me. She told him to curse God and die. Why don't you curse God and die? She was ready to get rid of Job. God allowed Satan to take everything he had, and now Satan is attacking his body. Yeah, Satan has started to attack his body because he's got uh, 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 sores and boils all over his body. Understand me good. I, I watched Eunice deteriorate over time. Eunice was a beautiful young lady. God allowed the cancer. God allowed the heart failure. God allowed those things to come into her life. And she prayed and she cried and she prayed and she cried. She would call me crying and ask me to pray for her, pray for her condition, pray for what she was going through. And I would always give her a word and sometimes Vet and I would put her on speakerphone and we would minister to her and every Sunday morning, she would listen to him. Since the COVID, she would listen to my broadcast. And she would call me afterwards and she said, say, Reverend, that sermon was for me. She called me Reverend Benson. Reverend Benson, that sermon was for me this morning. And every Sunday, she would text me and tell me the same thing. And here Job is with his friends. His three friends have come to sit with him just as we come and sit with people in their hour of comfort when they need to be comforted. His friends are here they, and they sit with him for seven days and haven't said a word. Seven days and not a word. But they do feel sorry for him. Uh, Tony, I submit to you now, people are, are going to tell you they feel sorry for you. Yeah, they're going to tell you that. Justin, they're going to tell you they feel sorry for you. They're going to they're gonna tell you that. But after seven days, on the eighth day, his friend spoke and said, what did you do wrong? What did you do to cause God to mess with you like that? What, what did you, how did you anger God? You're not suffering like this for no reason. Have you been lying to us all along? You, you know, people are going, people talk all the time. And they come up with different reasons for the afflictions of the righteous. Understand me good. And they're going to uh, talk about you anyway. Yes, Job, it must have been something in your past that God is punishing you for. Uh, you're not telling us because God would not let you go through what you're going through if you hadn't done something yourself. And, and, and I can submit to you this morning that, that Sister Bro, no matter, no matter what anybody said about her, she was a child of God. She loved the Lord. Ever since I've known her, she's loved the Lord. She had a Bible. Now, everybody and nobody is perfect. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not one of us in here that has not sinned and come short of God's glory. So there are no perfect people. So uh, you can say what you want to say about it. She had her ways about her. Eunice Broughton had her ways. Uh, her tongue could, was like a two-edged sword. It cut both ways. And, and, and she would say something out of her mouth. And I, and I can say this with all honesty because I have seen her over the years. She'll say something mean out of her mouth and then cry about it for a whole week. Hmm. She shed tears for a whole week because of what she said. And most of the time, she was telling the truth. Most of the time, I say most of the time, I didn't say all the time, but most of the time, she was telling the truth. She just let it out instead of keeping it in. Like most people do, they keep it in. She just let the people know. 
His friends are accusing God falsely, but Job uses all the breath he has left in his body. Then he utters these words, don't you slay me, yet will I trust in you. I know Eunice trusted in the Lord. I know she trusted in the Lord. She would question sometime, and everybody in here has questioned God at some time or another in your life. When he didn't show up when you wanted him to show up. When he didn't give you that house you asked for. When he didn't give you the job you asked for. There are many occasions when you wanted God to do something for you and he didn't show up. So don't question you when she questioned God because he didn't show up for her. Uh, Job tried to make his friends believe that he had done nothing wrong. And, and, and there, you know, there are a lot of people who pray for the patience of Job. I submit to you this morning, Eunice lived a life. She, kept, she took care of her mama. She took the mantle of taking care of her mama. For 50 years, I saw her take care of her mama. And you can say what you want to say about her. She was faithful about doing it. Everybody else wanted to do it like she did, but she was faithful, and she was jealous of anybody else who tried to do it. Mm. I'm just speaking truth to power. Let you understand who Eunice is. You know, good person, bad person too. All in one, Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. But God loved her. She loved God. She loved her son. She loved her grandchildren. She loved them to death. And she tried to chastise them, but they wouldn't let her. <laughs> I understand what I'm talking about. There are some people out there right now who ask for the patience of Job. But you don't want to go through what Job went through. To get to where he got to. I don't care what you say. <laughs> he went to God and asked God why. Oh, but, you know, you've got to understand that God is in control here. Tony Brown, God is in control. That's right. God came down put himself in a man's body for you and I, for the sins of the world, because we have committed, I have committed so many sins in my life, I can't even remember them all. I know there are a lot of sins that I, I've forgotten all about. Somebody, somebody can remind me if I see a friend from 50 years ago. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I used to hang with you. <laughs> Understand me good. I commend you and I commend her for her spirit. I commend her for her loyalty to her mother. I commend her for the heartache she suffered all her life. I commend all of you for putting up with her. Because she loved all of y'all. She just had a funny way of showing it sometimes. But she loved you, and y'all know she did. Everybody that's listening to me right now know I'm telling the truth. God, he, 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 he did not cause this calamity to fall on her. God has a path for all of us, and you've got to walk your own path. Everybody listening to me now, you've got to walk your own path. Because you don't know what's in store for you. And he, he Jesus went to a, a, a blood-soaked cross. Blood came streaming down. Crown of thorns on his head, pierced him in his side, put nails in his hand. Spikes in his feet for you to die for the sins of the world, for all of our sins. Nobody in here is perfect. 
And we're all going to die. And one day we're going to need somebody to stand at the right hand of the Father and say, that's my child. Look at my hands. Look at my side. Look at my feet. I shed my blood for them. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Understand me good. We have one God, one mediator between us and God. I don't want my nurse calling for St. Elizabeth. Understand me good. I don't want my teacher calling for St. Gregory. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want my musician calling for St. Hervey. I don't want anybody in the scene. I don't want, and I definitely don't want my accountant. Understand me good, calling for St. Matthew. When I go to make a purchase, when I want to buy something, I don't want St. Nicholas to be the one I go to. I don't want my medical social worker to be St. Regis either. But I declare to you, when I go to God, I want to go to God because I'm a sinner. And I need cleansing. I need to be made whole. I need for somebody to wash me in the blood of the Lamb. And take away my sins. Because I've committed a lot of sins. But I commend you. I sit here. I stand here right now and let you know that one day. I'm going to have to give an account for all of my sins. But I thank God that God stepped in. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, too. Yeah, he, he, he stepped in for me, and he's going to step in for you. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father because every time a child of God is called home, Jesus has to testify and say, look, look at the record. It's been washed whiter than snow. No matter who you are, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here today. Because sin has left a crimson stain. But thanks be to God, he has washed you whiter than snow. And I'm going to close right there because that's how Eunice was wanted. She wants you to know who she was. She was a child of God. She loved the Lord with all her heart, all her soul, all her mind. And she didn't care who knew it that she was a child of God. And so those of you who are here, somebody might need the Lord right now. That's the end of this eulogy right there. Because I'm standing here right now not knowing how we're going to get through this test. But holding on to faith, that's what the song says, you know best. And nothing can catch God by surprise because he has this figured out. And he's watching you now. And when it looks as if you can't win. He wraps us in his arms and steps in. And everything we need, he supplies. Does he not? And you got this in control. And now we know that you made a way. We're standing here today, and it looks like it is over. You made a way. And I'm standing here today only because you made a way. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall 
by your power perform miracles there ain't nothing that's impossible only because you made a way only because you made a way come on and sing it with me come on and stand everybody you made a way sit down tj you made a way and i'm standing here today only because you made a way you move mountains you cause walls to fall by your power you perform miracles there ain't nothing that's too hard for god only because you made away only because you made a way and that's all i have for you today god will make a way for you you just hold on he will make a way for you i'm gonna ask them to come right now Yes, you made a way. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy surely comes in the morning. In our hearts, Eunice would like you to know that her work here is done. She received a call, sort of an offer she couldn't refuse for an appointment for which she will not be returning. This assignment comes with a huge sign-on bonus, a reunion with family, friends that she have not seen in a long time. Her new mission takes her to a wonderful place where she will be socializing, tailgating, traveling, solving puzzles, eating candy, and reading her heart to her heart contents. Laughter and love are guaranteed. No car is required. She left detailed instructions to her son, grandchildren, siblings, to celebrate her mission here, which has now been completed. Low adherence to these instructions will not be tolerated. We would like to thank our wonderful eulogist, Reverend Benson from the Union Baptist Church in Gaston, Alabama, Dr. Michelle Jackson for those wonderful words and prayer, our soloist, Ms. Walters, and Miss Overstreet, and the family of Ms. Eunice Broughton would like to express our sincere gratitude for all the prayers, calls, texts, kind thoughts, and deeds shown to us during this time of bereavement. A special thanks to Harbor Grace Hospice Healthcare. We would like to also thank our soloists and all of you family and friends that has came for this homegoing celebration for Ms. Eunice Broughton. The family are indeed, indeed pleased by your presence. At this time, we're going to have Reverend Benson to come back 
and we're going to have our committal service here, and then we'll go with our benediction. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take unto himself the soul of our departed sister, Eunice Broughton, we bear her body to the place prepared for it that ashes may return to ashes and dust to dust, and the spirit released from this body may be forever with the Lord. Father, we thank you that you have been a good God, a kind God, and a merciful God. We ask that you keep this family in, in your arms, that you wrap your arms around them and hold them tight, and comfort them, send the comforter to comfort them. May the love of God, grace of Jesus, communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide in each and every heart. And all the saints of God said, Amen.